Hello. Hi, everybody. I'm so glad we made it this week. You know, we, we're still figuring out the technology, but we're here. Yay. So. <laughs> Uh, it's all part of the process. So you've got Ray Lushkin in, where are you in at home today in Chicago? I'm at home in Chicago. Um, so yeah, here we go. Yeah. So all right. we're here in fall. It's beautiful and sunny and on that chill side, you know, 40 kind of the high and, you know, the last days of the roses blooming at the Botanic Gardens. And I went there the other day and it was so much fun. I got just a few more pictures in and yeah. So, yeah. Now, there is that, that sense, um, I was saying the last few days, because same thing here is, uh, you know, I was at the beach a couple of days ago, but then yesterday it was like an overcast, rainy day and the winds were heavy. So you just, you could just feel the trees going, okay, I'm letting go. This is it. And I'm looking across now and I'm going, I see a lot of space now between those branches. <laughs> I know. I have trees outside my window and, you know, I've got a big weeping willow and yeah, and, and it's just okay. It still has a lot of leaves, but the rest of the trees around the property are sort of like devoid. Few little brown and red left. Yeah. So I get that. I'm thinking of that space as this opportunity in the between the trees is what we're talking about here. How to heal the heart. Oh, that was perfect metaphor. I love that. Yay. So last week, I'm just going to sort of recap what I ended up doing on just Facebook Live because we couldn't get connect here was I, I talked about, you know, going inside, finding out where your pain was from the Me Too campaign. You know, it was like, what can you do with where you're feeling? Because so many people were hurting, upset, um, triggers were activated, things like that for whatever trauma you've ever had in life, whatever grieving process that I, I suggested you you close your eyes, you go inside, and you you notice what you notice. Where where is there some tension? Where where is the, you know, where are you shrinking into yourself? Where are you feeling not so wonderful? There may be a knot in your shoulder or in your neck, or you know, there's a lump in your throat. You know, we have all these sayings. So where is it and what does it look like? And so it was lovely. And th that was the first piece. And I, I want to share a story in a, in a minute. And then the second part of the exercises was to think about what does a constricted heart look like and feel like and to draw that. And it may have jagged edges. It may have tears. It may be teeny. And then what does an expansive heart look like? So one of my uh, the people I've worked with for a while, she, her story is her 14 year old was raped. You know, and they they actually arrested the guy. They they you know went to trial, and the federal courts here said he said she said, and he got away. Right. And they went to civil court, and they won a judgment. But then his parents whisked him away somewhere else, so he never had to pay. Right. So this this woman, she did the the where is it? It's in my throat. It's down here. The pain, and she's like, oh my god, I'm starting to feel better. And on Saturday, she got a call from her lawyer saying they found him. He's going to jail for 20 years because, unfortunately, he raped another woman at gunpoint. But he is in jail now and won't be coming out for a long time. And so now she's ready to do the more expansive heart. And she knows her, her mission and her vision. And it's to go forward. She wants to change the laws here. You know, there were four girls because they talk, they say there were, he had against him four Jane Doe complaints. So that means they were underage. Right. And so, you know, and who knows how many women in the last 10 years he's raped, you know, nobody knows. So um, she wants to change the laws. And that's the, she, she talked about the voice. What is she going to do about freeing her voice? And now here she's got this bigger vision and mission. And I think that's what creativity can do for you. You don't know it at the time. You don't think about it. And yet this is the possibilities that we have. And so I'd love to do today a little bit about what's possible, you know, and use it in that in that form. If that's OK with you. And how are you feeling when I share that? Yeah, what I'm what I'm feeling is it's a great example of what seemingly was a tragedy, right? right? Has is going to affect positive shifts and change in our world. And I know you've experienced this by going through your issues. I have in how 
we contribute. And for those that are just recognizing that maybe they just are still in the beginning surfaces of this, is this process of healing, just as, as Ray was sharing, really does allow you to go from that constricted to expansive view and where you are now, believe it or not, helping others heal too. Right. And I mean, she's, she's all of a sudden, she said, you know, she's got her little, her sketchbook out. She, she does the exercises as we talk about them. Right. And she, yeah, I'm going to do more. And as the expansive, and then we talked about her writing her story from the mother's perspective, because yeah. that's not a story we hear. Usually we hear yeah. from the victim only, but the victim's family is, is, is well affected by this, but we don't usually hear those stories. So this is her bigger purpose. And that's what I, I believe that every time we face tragedy, we can use that to triumph and to make change and be the, be the change for somebody else and give them hope. Absolutely. Totally. So, yeah. All right. So there's, you know, I was going to, I just want to share one thing for those who, who just, you know, you're not necessarily into scribbles and doodles. I suggest you get a coloring book. I don't care what kind. You can go to the dollar store. Because there's some people who just like, I don't like crayons and I don't like, you know, the scribbles. They're too uncomfortable. But I would suggest getting a coloring book because there's lines and you can draw within the lines that that makes you, gives you that comfort. And there is. There are a lot of people who need that at this point in their lives. They're not ready to to try out and to live outside the lines yet. So just offering that as an alternative. Yeah. And if you get one, you can do some of these activities right on that page. You can color for 10 minutes and then do some more activities around it, some writing and journaling and all sorts of things. So. Yeah. I, can I just add that? Cause for what you just made about coloring in the lines, we talk so much about leaving out of the box, but for somebody that's let's say been a, um, a victim of sexual abuse, and their boundaries have disappeared, right? right? Learning to color in the lines and feeling what you feel as you're coloring, because sometimes that is just a sense of creating a beautiful picture in a safe space. That was, that's it. The safe space, you're creating it for yourself. You know, I mean, they've done a lot of studies now on the power of coloring, you know, and especially adult coloring books. I do have a fun fact that I found out. Uh, about coloring books, they were actually started like in the 1880s. There was an illustrator in England, and I love this story. She did children's books, and she had this magazine kind of thing that she she said, if you buy my coloring book and you send it to the magazine, we will then donate the coloring books, but they were to be painted, not colored, but to hospitals, to children in hospitals. So here is somebody doing something all the way back then, a creative activist. So I love that story. But that's when they started, and, and we can use them to, to relieve stress, and they've done studies on dementia patients. It's allowed, There's something about the way the brain works, too, that it balances both left and right brain, so they feel more focused, and they're, they're more comfortable. So it has benefits. Um, I've, had, I've read some studies that say, oh, it's not art therapy. It isn't in the traditional sense, but it is, you know, and there are so many cool coloring books out there. There are some... Um, there's a series by a woman and oh, I'm drawing a blank. It'll come back to me. And she's done them there and you can finish them. They're unfinished black and white drawings. So the lines are there, but then they become something much more there. They really are more expressive. So, but if you want to just color nature, you know, nature feeling, there's a ton of coloring books now about nature and flowers and all sorts of things. There's whimsy and children's stories. And, you know, I have a lot of the children's books, the Disney characters and stuff, because I, I find those are fun and, and get you to a different place. So. Well, it is. I, I just am sitting here smiling because I think it's very funny that one day we're just going to laugh. Everybody's going to laugh that we're scientifically discovering the thing that actually we already knew as a kid, we they, we just felt good about doing these things, right? And and then we've gone through this whole cycle to come back and say, but we've proven you can now color, you can now go play in the dirt, you know, right. you can walk barefoot, it's okay, you can right. take a break, you can hug a tree. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> oh, that is so funny that you said hug a tree because I went to the botanic gardens over the weekend and. And I went on a date with this man, and it was like our second date. And I and I said, I'm a tree hugger, literally. 
<laughs> and so I hugged this tree that I love, but it was so cold. I couldn't feel the energy the way I normally do. But he actually hugged the tree because, he, and he'd never done that before. So. Oh. <laughs> we, I actually have a conversation later today with uh, Flora Rudolph on, because meet the trees, because she has, has had experiences with individual trees and their energies. And so we're bringing that conversation now to light too. So oh, that is so funny because this is one of my favorite trees. It's this, it's a very special parchment maple tree in the Japanese garden here. And it's gorgeous and beautiful. And the energy, you can feel the energy flowing up and down the whole time. You just don't want to let go. And I've been standing there for minutes and people are walking by me. What is wrong with this woman? <laughs> But but it's it's that's the thing. It's like the stuff that just feels natural is we're coming back to knowing that that's natural, right? right, we've, right. Had, we've had to allow our brains to say, "Oh, we've discovered, we've proven." I know they did. They've done studies, and they said that children up to I think like eight years old spend twenty eight minutes a day coloring, and they are joyful. They are happy. So what can we do with 28 minutes of pure joy every day? You know, how would that change our lives? That's right. I go for 24 hours of pure joy, personally. Right, but you got to start, so start somewhere. So we're starting right here. That's right. And too many people won't give themselves permission to have 28 minutes a day. Well, let's you know, start with one then. Okay, one minute today. Yeah, well, no, we're having more because we, okay. we have another 20 minutes here. So we, whatever. So. Okay, so let I would love for you to just scribble today, and I want you to scribble an expansive heart. What does that look like for you today? Just allow dominant or non-dominant hand. Non-dominant today, because you know we've been busy all weekend and doing all this, and it's just we need to get out of our heads because you know we were working yesterday, and I know I was, and yeah, let's let's do that. Let's just relax into that. Yeah, just what what flows? What is flowing out of you? You know, imagine that you are just in this beautiful space out in nature and that you are hugging a tree, laying on the grass, looking at the clouds, playing games with the people you love. You're doing everything that makes you happy. And you just feel this, this energy flowing through you, this beautiful light that expands bigger and bigger throughout every cell in your body. What color is it? What is that color? Or maybe it's rainbow hues. Maybe it's pinks and blues and purples. Whatever colors work for you, just allow it to flow out of you. What does that feel like, look like? Know that there's this continuous ebb and flow of the ocean that is bringing joy and love and this beautiful you know healing energy and oxygen to your to your heart and it's pumping beautifully it's strong it's powerful and it is bringing life to every cell in your body it is bringing life to your dreams what is possible okay I am going to have to post a picture after this of what happened to me last year when I did my, I realize now I did this heart and it was like an expansive heart that I painted and it's in a different room. So I'll go take a picture of it and post that was really my feeling of my heart just expanding beyond what was that I'd conceived up until that point. Yeah. Well, this is what mine was. This is a painting that I did and it was a heart. And it bloomed, you know, it was the flowers blooming. So I totally get that. Yeah. So we each have to find that heart that resonates and, and is that expansive blooming of life. And so now I have a little exercise for you to, to just write down right on that page. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you some questions and I want you to just write the words that come to you. So uh, your favorite color. Your favorite food. <laughs> Your favorite song. Ah. What is the 
most fun thing that you love to do? Now, if you were a superhero, would you like to be invisible or would you like to fly? Where is your favorite spot in your home? What is your favorite adventure? Do you have a favorite character from a movie or a book? Hmm. And what is your favorite random act of kindness? One that you've given and one that you've received. If you could do anything, you had three wishes from a genie in a bottle. What are those three wishes? Now, that's all the questions I'm going to ask. And I want you to sort of look at this. And what did you notice? Is there any words, anything that popped up, anything that surprised you looking at this? Did it reflect the possibilities of life for you and the joy of that expansive heart? Yes. Okay. You know, one of the things that actually popped up for me was the color pink, and I was laughing because when that first popped into my head, and I remember when I was growing up because I didn't pink was associated with girls. So not even as I was growing up, even when my firstborn girl was born. The last thing I was going to do was put her in pink. Right? pink yeah. It was like pink, which just meant a weak color. It meant, you know, like it was like defining that you're a female and you're weak and you're going to get hurt. And no, my daughter was never going to have that experience. Are you wearing pink today? I am. Pink is my thing. I, I wear it all the time now. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you'll see pink captions because it's pink, pink, pink. Uh-huh. Got it. Got it. So what I want you to do now, and this is tapping into a little bit of a different kind of creativity. If you have, if you have, I want you to write a story using all the words that you just wrote down. And this is like almost like a Mad Lib. I, did you, right. you, okay. So for those who don't know that, it's sort of like you just fill in the blank. You don't have, you can use the words. It can be funny. You can start once upon a time if you want to create a poem. But this is taking all that pleasure and joy and just expanding it into to a story that could be your life, the life you'd like to lead. You know, think about it. Okay, I got to ask you, which superhero power did you choose? Fly. Okay, so if we were looking at life and you could fly over your life and look down 10 years from now, next year, whatever, what would that expansive life look like? What are those possibilities? So think about it from that perspective as you're writing. I think I, I ask people to do this exercise because when you've been through a trauma, you don't usually think about possibilities. Right. It's like getting through the day. Oh my God, how am I going to survive? This gives you a little bit of the future. 
that possibility of what could be. And I know for me, I wasn't able to heal till I allowed myself to dream bigger, to imagine something different, you know, because what you know is what you know. And until we break those habits and patterns and those stories that we've been telling ourselves. So that's why I want you to create a new story right. around these things that are possible. Yeah, because it's like opening the door, even if it's a little crack, it's when you're continuing to look at what's happened to you and you're looking at those effects and impacts and, and how things are and what's going on, you just see more of it. But if you can, as you say, create this idea of a vision of what you'd like and how it would be and what starts to just give you a little bit of joy, if that's all you can feel, it's like you're opening the crack so the door can open in a safe way for you that's comfortable, but it leads you down into this new realm of possibility and healing your heart. Right, right. And and we all need that. And even if you're, you know, you've been healed, quote healed, you know, working on the journey a long time, this exercise works at any time when you feel stuck. Because we all get stuck somewhere, you know, maybe you're stuck for an idea at work. You could do the same thing, you know, and look, and I always love to use the superhero one. So, you know, if you're stuck at work, what would that superhero say or do or how would they approach it or whatever? And so we can do these kind of little activities that are usable in many ways. So it, it isn't just about healing. It's about using, it's harnessing the power of creativity to yes you know, unlock, unlock our wildest dreams, to take actions toward our dreams, to, to, to discover and define who we want to be. Mm -hmm. And I could see my, my superhero now too, just being able to go stop, you know, as, as anything that was bothering me, right? My superpower could say stop and they'd be like light shooting out from the palms and <laughs> Exactly. Did right. I want people to live like it's okay. It's already happened. It doesn't necessarily does. It's happened, and now it's about you can enforce your boundaries, your force fields, your whatever you need is your superpower to make yourself feel safe. Right. Well, I have to tell you, the Wonder Woman character comic book was created by a male uh, therapist. Oh. And he did one of these assessments. I can't remember if it's DISC or one of those kind of assessments. Right. He created those. Marston is his name. And I was like, really? And he came up with Wonder Woman with his friend and his wife, you know, and they created this character. But and so, you know, we have to allow ourselves to be Wonder People, you know, and I love that you said like this, and you know, and you can, you know, you put up your arms like this. Wonder Woman crossed it. Stay away. You know, I'm powerful. I've got this, you know, whatever it is. I think it's really important that we develop that that for ourselves, especially as we're healing and, and moving forward in any of these, you know, from any of these traumas that have been long, deeply buried. You know, it's almost like part of one of the exercises I've done before is actually create a courage talisman. You know, what, you know, whether it's a ribbon or a medal for yourself, something, you know, maybe it's the, the, the lion from the Wizard of Oz, you know, whatever it is, you find something that that superhero pose that becomes you especially in those moments of doubt and fear yeah absolutely because sometimes my experience was that although i was completely safe in my condo you know on the 10th floor as i say security system on there gated security in the building I still had that sense of fear so the butcher's knife was under my pillow you know and it, it's like getting to that point where as I was healing, I started to just feel like I was in that superpower mode in the sense of flicking. Like I could just start to feel like there was something and I would just be like, yeah. like I'm, I'm, I'm just sending my superpower out to keep me protected. And, you know, it, it worked for me. That's all I can say. Right. And, and, you know, there's no right or wrong superpower. You can have anyone you want. If you need to feel invisible for a while, that makes you feel safe, be invisible. You know, if you want to you know, fly, fly. You know, it's like there's so many ways. You may want to be the fly on the wall. You know, you want to hear, you know, you can speak to animals, whatever it is. Play with it because it's a metaphor for who you want to become, whatever that, that courage is to you and how you define it. It's very good when you said, okay, what type of, like if you want to be the fly on the wall, right? Because all those things are probably symptomatic too of how we're healing. Being invisible may be that you were 
feeling you were, it was because you were doing something. I've heard that before in some of my clients is they were out expressing themselves and that's when they got hurt. So the last thing they want to do is express again. They want to, they want to not be seen. So. Right. They want to shrink down and be invisible. And uh, invisibility is a really interesting topic because invisible keeps you safe at certain times. You know, how many people have had to navigate mental illness at home, alcoholism, and they're just like, I want to be invisible. I'm going to hide because otherwise I'm going to get whipped, you know, those kind of things. So it has its pluses, you know, and it, you learn to shrink down. You don't want anybody to notice you. But then there comes a point, at least for me, where I was like, I don't want to be invisible anymore. I want to be visible. I want a bigger platform. I want people to hear my stories and see my art and know that there is hope. And we all go through it at our own time frame, our own pace. And you may never be that person who wants to be on the platform of, you know, helping thousands of people. That's okay. You know, you have to respect where you are, but just be aware of what your choices are because you are choosing one or the other at this point in your life. And and it's so interesting because I, I wanted to be invisible too. And I used weight to hide me because people walk by the fat girl. They just didn't notice me. You know, we all do different things. And then you hear about anorexics who don't want to be visible. They want to shrink down so you just ignore them because they're so skinny you don't barely see them. So there's both sides of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, so well, this is a very interesting discussion. We do have those. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think there's it's because we both had such, you know, great experiences. I mean, it's been decades, right, that we've been going through these processes. So, I, you know, that... I think you hit on a very key point is you may be in that place where you feel like you've done a lot of healing work, right? You may be watching us going, well, I've done all this healing work and I want to share my story, but it isn't happening. And it could be that you're still holding on to that invisibility that maybe was your cloak before. And right. that's like a deep seated pattern that it's in your hard drive, right? Like it's back there in the computer and you're wanting to go forward and it's saying, no, you chose this. So just look at that. And if that's the case, let it go today. Let it go that you are, no, you can let go being invisible and you're ready to stand in your own power now and be visible and trust the process. Right. And I think if you need a little extra help, contact Jacqueline, contact me. You know, those are the kinds of things that I think too, you need to make friends with that part of your soul that's been so deeply ingrained. I believe in writing letters to ourselves, you know, to that part of us. Thank you for keeping me safe all these years. I know that invisibility was a choice I made as a child. It served me well for a very long time, but I have this desire to move out into the world to be seen for who I am, for being authentic now, not hiding who I am. So let's figure out a way we can do this together. I, I love you for who you've been, and I love you for how you're going to help me become who I want to be. That's beautiful. I think you should repeat that. Okay. <laughs> Not all the exact same words, I know, because it flowed so naturally. But just let people hear what you're saying, giving themselves permission to how to love their past and who they were invisible moving forward. Right. Okay. You know, whatever part of you that, that has tried to, because we all have come up with very good coping mechanisms. When you've been traumatized, you, you develop them. You know, for me, weight. Eating was one, you know, I that, but then again, I, you know, and I still, this is one of my permanent, not permanent, personal struggles today that I'm still trying to say, okay, that doesn't serve me anymore. So I've had, you know, I've written dialogues to myself, letters saying, Ray, thank you so much for protecting me as a child. Um, I know that weight was the way you did it. You made yourself heavier, you ate so that you could calm yourself, but that doesn't serve anymore. So what can we do to go forward to change that pattern so that it serves me? Again, I love you and I thank you for the service that you've provided me over the years. You did help me navigate some difficult times, but this is not a pattern I want to carry into the future. So what can we do to change that? Because we awesome. love you. Okay, good. Yay. <laughs> And that way you see how it works in two different arenas, whether it's something you want to let go of, a habit that's, you know, very visible, you know, and if you're dealing with addictions, you know, of, of you know, body image issues, all of these things that affect us, you know, even self-medicating in other ways, whether you've self-medicated through gambling, sex addiction, you know, we all found ways to self-medicate 
to take care of ourselves. And we need to forgive ourselves for that. Absolutely. So we have this beautiful vision that you started in the story that we were writing. That right. I would love you to read just a few, you know, whatever you, how far you got. Because this could take five minutes, it could take ten. So I, I said, once upon a time, I was a pink, beautiful dancer who was flying from her latest safari. Uh, she decided to stop and eat chocolate <laughs> and spread spontaneous happiness with her smiles and receive gifts and blessings from others with their uh, experience of life. And that's where I got to when we started chocolate. That's beautiful. And that's that's like a an affirmation. That's a vision. And if you wrote that out and you carried it with you, when those moments of, you know, sadness come over you or fear or doubt, this is what is possible. So if we take that and, and you know, you can you can reduce it to a one sentence if you want. You can expand it to a full story. You can play with this. This is one of those pieces that that's that would you know, I've done this this exercise with um some people and they were like crying. Oh my God, I can't believe this came out of me. It was so beautiful. It was so poignant. I didn't know I could think that way. I didn't know that I even wanted that for myself. And so, you know, that that's the beauty of this exercise. What well, reminds me a little bit of what we used to do around the table, like at Thanksgiving or birthdays or Christmas when the different dynamics were present is when we started to have this storytelling game so to to change the so we weren't talking about the news or the media or anything like that and so it would be like once upon a time I was walking down the street you know and I found a penny and then the next person has to turn around and say something and again it's just this idea of shifting the dynamic so this isn't about a vision about a healing but it was in a sense a healing of a conversation with family instead of being focused on whatever the past patterns were or, you know, the conversations that avoid. Right, right, right. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful activity. And it really does. You know, it's like it, it gets you out of the regular mindset and allows for possibilities of communication, joy, happiness, deeper engagement with people. So I, ideally, like people, as you say, can reference this, can, build it, can change it. I mean, it's not like it has to stay stagnant. So every time they it's might have evolving. And as you evolve, it's going to change. This is just a starting place. Yeah. And I like to start with a lot of those things. What, what was your favorite color? Those are simple things. They're easier. Um, we didn't get into a lot of the deep things, you know, that you could do and explore. But I think this gives such depth and richness to to this idea that we can, we have we have some sense of control here because it's just our mind. It's our imagination. And we can expand it as big and wide and beautiful as we want. And I think that's what's different about this. Yeah. And and I just feel like, too, just putting your hand on your heart, really, and recognizing that your heart is still beating. Like, it's still beating. You're still breathing. Regardless of this, you still have been gifted with the opportunity to expand and express in a different way. So open up and allow yourself to be supported by those who want you to blossom and realize that just as like we're talking about autumn and the trees are letting go, they're certainly not going, oh my gosh, life is over. <laughs> right, life is over, that's right. I, it was so interesting because you know I mentioned the gentleman at the beginning and, he, and we were talking, I said fall is my favorite season. And he said, I find something beautiful in each season. And he, you know, he went and talked about it. Great question. What do you find beautiful in each season? Mm. Yeah. And there is. It's just like, what do you have find beautiful in today? And I mean, I, I feel that this conversation is a, a wonderful conversation that and so many levels, the healing that's going on, the dreaming, your dream big, right, that you're talking about is, is the more we focus on what, where we want to go. And have a in, in um, not an intelligent conversation, but we communicate those in the words we choose. We have an intention. We have an intention. intention. Thank you. That's, yeah. what, that's what you're doing by this drawing, by writing the story. You're giving, you're, you presented an intention for the life that you want to live. And when we have that intention, you know that you know you want whatever way you want to call it. it you know, infinite intelligence, the universe is going to hear it. And know that is what your dream is. And we'll find ways to vibrate with you and, and 
you know, bring you the resources, people, opportunities that you need to take it to the next level. So we're here in conversation and in, in helping reach out to Ray at the winning adventure dot com. Yeah. Right. right. Um, you know, I'm here at best whole new world here. And actually, I don't know if you know this or not, Ray, but I just felt on Sunday uh, to lead to start to do a little um, short blurbs on YouTube series on the impacts, Me Too impacts and healing, because I recognized that it, the way I treated others, you know, the, what I did, let's say, to the nice guys, because of the experience I had, those are the things that I want people to get a bigger picture. So it's not so much just what happens first with the victimization, but it's a rippling effect. And it's as we each own what has gone on for ourselves, we really do give permission to be in all of us versus just the me too. Oh, that's beautiful. And that sort of wraps around to my friend who's talking about it from a family perspective. You know, yeah. not just her daughter, it's how it impacted her brothers and sisters and her, you know, and even her clients that she has, you know, and, and because of the stories that, been you know yeah perfect beautiful i love how your your heart opens up so many possibilities to everybody so thank you for being you thank you for being you and thank you for being here and i look forward to next week oh and have a beautiful time in san diego say hi to everybody for me that i'm not going to be with you and bbs okay but i will and then we'll, we'll we have another one scheduled for next tuesday yeah yeah okay sounds right? good Do we? yeah we yeah. have, I think we're doing four in a row. So this is yeah, two. We, yeah, we got this. And we'll, we'll talk. Oh, we'll figure it out. Okay. Yeah, bye.